What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to divide exponents. And we're specifically going to go over problems dealing with algebraic expressions, okay? So starting up here on the top left, we have x to the fifth power over x to the third power. So whenever you have the same base, so we have an x in this case, right? This is actually pretty easy. Okay, so all you're going to do, you have an x here, you have an x here, so you just keep the x and then you subtract the exponents. Okay, so you always write the one that's on top first, so five, and then you subtract the bottom one, so minus three, okay? So five minus three is two, so here we're gonna have x to the second power, or in other words, x squared, okay? So that would be your answer. So not too bad, right? Now let's go to this next example where they're flipped. Okay, so now this time we have the three on top and the five on the bottom, but still the same process, okay? So again, we have the same base. We got an x here, got an x here, so just keep the x. And then subtract your exponents. And very important, again, the one that's on top is the one that you write first, okay? So the three's on top this time, so we write the three first. And then we're gonna subtract the five, minus five. Okay, so then three minus five is equal to negative two, right? So then this is gonna be equal to x to the negative two. Now, how do you deal with a negative exponent? Well, that's not too bad. All you have to do is write it as a fraction by putting it under one. So we're gonna have one over this thing, x. The only difference is your exponent becomes positive when you put it down here, right? Okay, so x to the negative two is equal to one over x to the positive two, right? So that would be your simplified answer. Okay, so let's do one more kind of easy-ish example right here. So we have n to the 17 over n to the 17. Now, anything divided by itself is equal to one, right? But, of course, your teacher's not gonna accept that. You gotta show your work, bro, and bro Safina, okay? So how would you do that? Well, again, it's still the same process, okay? So got the same base, right? N and an N. So you just keep the N, and then you subtract the exponents. So the top one always goes first, so 17. And then we're gonna subtract the bottom one, which is also 17. Okay, so, 17 minus 17 is equal to zero. So here we're gonna have n to the zero power. And anything raised to the zero power is equal to one, right? So we still get back to that same answer. Okay, so hopefully those weren't too bad. Now let's mix it up a little bit and throw some coefficients in here. So here we have two x to the fifth over seven x to the minus three. Okay, so one thing you can do here is split up the coefficients from the variables. So we can literally have a fraction right here, so two over seven, and then multiply it by this other fraction that we have here, x to the fifth over x to the negative three. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to our first fraction, the two over seven, so two over seven, and then we're gonna multiply that by our other fraction, x to the fifth power over x to the negative three power. So x to the fifth power over x to the negative three power. Okay, so first of all, with the two over seven, we can't reduce that anymore, right? So this is just gonna stay as two over seven. But this other part, the x to the fifth over x to the negative three, we can simplify this, right? The same way we simplified all these three up here. Okay, so we have an x here, we have an x here, so just keep the x and then subtract the exponents. And remember the one on top always goes first. So five minus, and then we have a negative three on the bottom, right? Negative three. Okay, so five minus negative three, that's the same thing as five plus three, right? And then five plus three is eight. So here we're gonna have x to the eighth power, okay? So this little fraction right here is going to reduce to x to the eighth power. Okay, and remember we're multiplying right here, right? So two sevenths times x to the eighth is equal to two sevenths x to the eighth, okay? Or you could write it like this, two x to the eighth over seven. Okay, this answer right there and this answer right here are the exact same thing, just two slightly different ways of writing it. Okay, now let's go to this next example right here. So 8a to the fifth over 2a to the 10th. Okay, so again, we're gonna do the same thing. You can basically split the numbers from the variables. Okay, so we're gonna split 
the numbers, right, the coefficients from these variables right here. Okay, so let's multiply this out. So this is going to be equal to 8 over 2 times a to the 5th over a to the 10th. Okay, and then we can reduce this a little bit, right? So 8 over 2, or 8 divided by 2, that reduces down to just 4. And then we're going to multiply that by our fraction over here. So a to the 5th over a to the 10th. So again, following our rules, we have the same base, right? An a and an a. So just keep the a. And then we're going to subtract the exponents, right? Starting with the top one. So on top we have a 5. So 5 minus the bottom one, 10. And then 5 minus 10 is negative 5, right? So then this is going to be a to the negative fifth power. So a to the negative fifth power. Again, how do you deal with a negative exponent? Well, remember you can write it as a fraction by putting it under 1, right? So it's going to be 1 over a to the positive fifth. And then we're still multiplying by this 4 out here, right? So 4 times 1 over a to the fifth. I'll scoot over just a little bit. And to multiply these together, if it helps, you can think of the 4 as a fraction also by putting it over 1, right? So 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1. And then multiplying fractions, you just multiply them straight across, right? So on top, we have 4 times 1, which is 4. And then that's going to go over the bottom, 1 times a to the 5th, which is just a to the 5th. Okay, so this would be your final answer, 4 over a to the 5th. Alrighty, now let's just do two more examples, and these, as you can see, have some negative signs in them. Okay, so here we have negative p to the negative third power over p squared, right? So this negative sign can be confusing sometimes, so one thing you can do is just write a 1 right there, right? So whenever there's no coefficient right here, you can always assume there's a 1 right there, right? And it's the same thing down here. Okay, so then you can see we have negative 1 over positive 1, and then you can treat it the same way we did these two problems up here, okay? So you can separate your numbers right here, sorry, that's a little messy, from your variables. So the p to the negative 3 over p squared, okay? So then if we multiply this out, we're going to have negative 1 over positive 1, right, positive 1, and then we're going to multiply that by our variables right here. So p to the negative 3 over p squared. Okay, so negative 1 divided by positive 1 is just negative 1. And then we're multiplying that by this fraction right here. So we have the same base, right? We have a p here, we have a p here, so just keep the p. And then subtract your exponents. So negative 3 is on top, so that one we write first, right? Negative 3 minus the bottom one, which is 2. Okay, and then negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So then this is going to be equal to negative 1 times p to the negative 5. Okay, now p to the negative 5, we can write that as a fraction by putting it under 1, right? So this would be 1 over p to the positive 5. And then again, we're still multiplying by this negative 1 out here. Okay, so then negative 1 times 1 over p to the 5th would be equal to negative 1 over p to the fifth. Okay, that would be your final answer. Okay, or another way you could write that is negative one over p to the fifth. Okay, this and this are the exact same thing, just two, again, slightly different ways of writing it. Okay, so let's do this last example, and I'm gonna scroll down just to give myself some extra room right here. So here we have an ugly looking thing, right? So we have 5x to the 4th y squared over negative 3x squared y to the 7th. Okay, so again, you want to separate all of your like terms. So I want to separate the numbers here from the x's. And I also want the y's to be by themselves. Okay, everything is going to have its own little fraction. So this is going to be equal to our first fraction right here, 5 over negative 3. And then we're going to multiply that by our other fraction right here, x to the 4th over x squared. And then we're going to multiply that by this last fraction right here, y squared over y to the 7th. Okay, and then this whole thing is going to be equal to, so let's simplify this. 
Now starting with our numbers. So five over negative three, we can't reduce that anymore. So we can just write that as five over negative three. Okay, and then coming to our next little fraction right here, x to the fourth over x squared. So this is gonna be the same thing as x, and then subtracting the exponents, four minus two, right? Four minus two, and then four minus two is just two. So then this would be x squared, okay? So times x squared. And then we're gonna multiply that by this last fraction right here, y squared over y to the seventh. So again, we have a y, we have a y, just keep the y, and then subtracting the exponents, it'd be two minus seven, right? Two minus seven. So then this would be y to the negative fifth power. y to the negative fifth power. Now again, how do you deal with a negative exponent? Well again, you just have to put it under one, right? So it's gonna be one over y to the positive fifth. Okay, so then multiplying this out, we're gonna have five over negative three times x squared times one over y to the fifth. Okay, so now multiplying all this out one more time, and this x squared, right, you can think of it as x squared over one, right, to make it a little more clear. So on top we have five times x squared times one, which would be equal to five x squared, and then that's gonna go over the bottom, right? So negative three times one times y to the fifth, which would be negative three y to the fifth. Okay, this would be your final answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.